Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we've got Psalms 112.4. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. So just remembering to be what God wants me to be. Um, yeah. All right, so my projects. I kind of sort of finished this but I hate it so I'm literally thinking I'm going to frog the whole thing um I haven't taken the yarn and snipped it off or anything but I don't know it's bigger and bulkier than I thought it would be number one um which heavy I like that but I just don't like the way it sits on my shoulder and how much I struggle to get it on my shoulder so, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like this. And this was somebody else's pattern. And as you can see, it's all, I mean, it, it's okay. Would I wear it? No. It was supposed to be for me. Yes. So I'm literally, this yarn is super soft. Um, And now you get to watch me struggle to get it off. It just, I don't know. It's very... Uh, tight. Uh, I mean, it fits, don't get me wrong. And I've even tried lengthening it where the seam is. And I've put rows in and I've taken rows out and just not liking it. So I'm literally thinking I'm going to frog it and make something else out of it. Uh, just not liking it. I, I know that sounds terrible, but looks like a big elephant trunk <laughs> I don't like it so yeah um not sure about what I'm gonna do with that one um thought about giving it away don't know it, it's just one of those I don't know don't know don't know don't know so I have been spending my time on two different things um, this one I brought back out of, uh, what do you call it? Timeout. And I have the first side done, I think. And so, yeah, that's going to be the first side. Now, the thing is, is I thought it would go this way across me. And it's far too wide at the shoulders but i placed it on my mannequin and i do like how it drapes going up and down so um i'm thinking it's going to go like this with the bottom triangle down here and then i'll make the second one to come around and match it and then join it at the side so that it's because i want it to be kind of Kind of flowy, but kind of um, fitted. I don't want it just to be a poncho. I want it to have definite armholes in that. So I've got the first one of those done. And I started on a second side to make it match. And basically, I'm going to make two of these, piece it together the way I like. And then I'm going to uh, fill in anywhere that I want. So, uh, yeah, I have this much done to the second piece. So... Even if it doesn't turn out the way I want, this is going to be the back. So I'm going to make the back across there. And we'll see how it goes. I have no idea what I'm doing with those. It's kind of like that yellow thing. Um, thought I knew what direction I was going, and I don't know. I am loving the way this is working out. Oh, my hook slid out. I am loving the way that this is working up. Um, I like this bubbly kind of loose, uh, I'd say stitch pattern. I don't know if you can see that. So it takes two rows to complete one row. Okay. And I started with a simple hundred across chain stitches. Oh my gosh. So I've got a hundred chain stitches across here. 
then I did a, so the pattern is, and I started with a chain one, okay, and then you double crochet, and then you treble crochet, then you double crochet, then you, so, no, chain one, double crochet, treble crochet, I can't even say it, so it's one, two, three, two, one, um, so single, double, treble, double, single, double, treble, double, single. So every other one is a double, and then you alternate between the single and the treble. And when you first have it, um, your odd rows look like this one, okay, and it's bubbly. But when you do two rows together, it squares up because on your treble, you're doing a single, and there's a, a, it's four stitches tall on all of it. So if you see the bottom is actually flatter and better. And then this top one is bubbly. And I'm not showing it very well, but you can see that it does a wavy. And then once you do the second row, um, so every even row, it's flat across there. And then every odd row you have this little wavy thing but i really like the way it's working up i like the texture i like how soft this yarn is i love this vape jazz it's something that i got in a kit and i didn't like what they did with it so i'm doing my own thing and i really am liking it it's super soft so oh i've got the hiccups i'm sorry all right then i've been working on I have bag, this little bag that I've been carrying with me, and I've been making little ornaments. And not liking the way it worked up, and I'm halfway through a row, but it's supposed to be an ice skate, but I don't like this. It's not very rounded. It's very square. And I've tried just slip stitching it. I've tried. So anyway, um, I made the... Uh, Uh, what do you call it? I made all the angels. I did the trees. I did some stars. And now I'm just playing around. There's nothing, you know, that I'm doing. I just was playing with the ice skate thing. I remember making them as a kid and they look cute. But I don't know. I don't know. Just not working out today. Um, yesterday or earlier this week. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on, and I actually went to a spin-in on Wednesday. The first Wednesday of the month, they have one over at a local yarn shop. And I have been going there. And I have been spinning, where's my bottle? The two pounds of the domestic wool. This is all I have left. Okay. So I have this bobbin right here, which was what was left when I plied last. Okay, so I set it aside and I started another one. And I have, let's see if I can show it. I don't want to take the whole wheel apart. I've been. Oh, excuse me. There's hitch. Um, but I have this much. Okay, I know that's not very clear. Um, I got the little poop right here that I was working on. Um, so, yeah, I went to the spin-in and worked on it. And so far, at last count, I had 2,026 yards of a two-ply. That's a lot. Um, but I am trying to get this off my wheel because I have another one that I want to move on to. But I've decided that I'm not going to move on until this is done. Uh... If I ever order two pounds of any wool again, it will be for a certain project. I'm not going to uh, just randomly order. I looked again, and the prices for that, uh, what's the name of that, R, uh, why do I do this? I never can remember. It's R.H. Lindsay, R.L. Lindsay, R.L. Riley. I, let me see here. 
R.H. Lindsay. This one right here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it's going to focus, but they have some reasonably priced wool, and I got their cheapest stuff last time I ordered. And believe it or not, it's been two years since I ordered this. And they have not only amazing prices, um, but they, okay, so just so you know, if you're looking for roving, this is Moreno Top, and it's dyed black. And it is not $18 for a uh, eight ounce braid. It is $18 a pound. All right. The Merino wool, they tell you the source so you can buy local. You can buy this one. This Merino happens to be from Spain. The micron count is 23. Um, it gives you the staple length. Uh, they will sell you a bump, but a bump is 35 pounds, so you can do bulk. Um, you know, it, and each bump is a different weight and stuff. They give you really good information about what you're getting. Um, you can get, uh, this one that I'm looking at is Targi Top. I love Targi, okay? And it is $13.50 a pound. Okay. So think about when you're going to a fiber festival and you're buying, you know, one of those lovely dyed braids. And they're wanting 20 some dollars a piece. Now I get they've got, you know, their stuff in it and their stuff. But if you're like me and looking for just raw wool so that you can play, Thirteen fifty plus shipping and handling was, I think I have, yeah, I've been looking to place another order, but I'm, so, <coughs> I've got, uh, two, four, five pounds of this, and it literally comes to $46.40. Now, I have to pay $12.55 shipping to me. So, for $60. I'm getting five pounds. That is $12 on average a pound. Um, again, I'm going with the domestic wool. I like to, they get that locally sourced. So it's farmers that send in their wool and they blend it and they use long wools or short, you know, they just kind of blend everyone's together and it's, in the US, it's domestic um, wool, and their source is uh, it says Fleece States of the United States, and micron spin count is 29.5. Trust me, this stuff, it might have a high micron count, but I love it. It spins like a dream, and it is soft. I mean, I it is awesome. Um, the New Zealand Romney Top, of course, is from New Zealand. Uh, and it's processed in the United States. So they buy raw fleeces from New Zealand and then they process them. And so, yeah, it, I love it. I'm thinking $60 for five pounds. Again, this is a good deal. It, it's an awesome uh, price. 12, you know, if, if I have the $60 in it, five pounds, 65 is $12 a pound. Then if you divide that down by the uh, ounces, you know, a pound is two of those. So you've got literally $6 in one of those braids that you would get at a fiber festival. Even spending $6 in materials to dye it, it still comes out to $12, you know, that you have in it. And then you can spin it or you can sell it and still make a profit. So I love this roving and um, they have some higher end stuff. If you're looking for higher end stuff, that's great. 
they have died, they have uh, raw, and what I like about it is there's, I've not seen them, well, there's a, a pound minimum, so you have to get at least one pound, um, because that's how they're priced. Uh, bumps can run you hundreds, so if you're in the bulk, you know, you could do hundreds of pounds. By the way, bumps have free shipping. But they're like 30 some pounds. And remember that, you know, it, they run about two to $300 for a big bump. So I really want the Targi. And I'm thinking if I'm going to place the Targi order, save on shipping handling later on, I'll want some. So I may be placing another order. Although I am trying to tell myself I only need to place an order when. I want to spend for a certain project. I'm not convincing myself of that, just so you know. So I have been working on that. Um, I did go to the spin in and I do have my little projects. Uh, other than that, that is all I have that I haven't finished. I finished the bag, um, the reversible cross, whatever. I took time to clean up the sewing room. Christmas is all put together. The only thing that looks horrible is my bedroom. I've got everything in there. I still have Christmas stockings in there, uh, in that tote. I still have um, a few things that I need. And I'm thinking that this winter on the weekends, I'm going to start cleaning out the stuff that I have saved. See what I really need. Because remember, from here, at some point, I'm going into the tiny home. Um, that's kind of been put on back pole, but it's forever in my mind. Um, so I will be cleaning out and get rid of, getting rid of some stuff. I'm trying not to buy a lot of yarn or craft stuff. Um, I still have some yarn at the farm that I need to bring and go through. We'll see. So, um, yeah, I have decided that for sewing projects and that I think I'm going to go for the sewing projects because I just like to sew. I think I'm going to start just making my own clothes instead of making everything else next year I don't think I'm gonna do the entire office for presents I think I'm just gonna do a small ornament for everyone that means I have to make 82 of them so I am going to try and do something small um, I'm going to th I'm thinking that I am going to do the crocheted angels or the crocheted uh, trees. I really like the angels and I could make those and put them together pretty easy. The thing that I'm considering is the cost of the beet. Um, that would be all. I mean, I've got that white. I, I think I might just do snowflakes. I have made beaded ones for most of the people at the office and I think this year, this next coming year I'm just gonna do a bunch of snowflakes so anyway or stars that's a good one stars I might just crochet stars but as far as having a small project that you know I just don't think so um, I try to show appreciation with them and this year I've done far less and I think next year I'm gonna do even further less I'm tired of Christmas being about the presents. Um, at the office, I tried to show appreciation through the summer and I gave jelly out and that. So people should know I appreciate them. Um, and it should be an all year thing. So uh, next year, I'm going to scale back what I do for Christmas. I'll be working on wedding stuff for RJ. So I'm thinking that's good enough. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. I've got to get ready. As you can see, I'm still in my glasses. I need to get my contacts in and get dressed. Yeah, I don't wear Harley Davidson t-shirts to work, but um, I'm going to go get dressed. I got to go to work. I am so looking forward to Christmas and that three-day holiday. I'm so ready to be retired. Not that I don't like my job. It's ready to be retired. But I need to get that back room cleaned out before I retire. This room looks great, though. I've just got my sewing machines up. I got rid of, I, I put the sewing box away 
when I was sewing, it stayed out constantly. So I've gone through and just kind of put things away in, in their homes. And it looks so much ne neater in here. So anyway, all right, you guys have a great week. Uh, enjoy the holiday season and Merry Christmas. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye.